import an airfoil into SolidWorks from airfoiltools.com. This one, we're going to focus on the performance parameters that we see for those airfoils in airfoiltools.com. So that's CL. Here we've got CL, CD, coefficient of lift, coefficient of drag. Alpha is the angle of attack. And the most confusing one that I found when I was starting out was the CM. So we're going to focus on that to get a physical interpretation of what that is. So this airfoil, first of all, it's not really working too well in the super low Reynolds numbers. So let's just not plot those to get a, a better sense of this. So CL is your coefficient of lift. It's a small L as opposed to C big L for a wing. And this means that we're dealing with an airfoil, so that that's essentially an uh, infinitely long wing or a wing that has no edge effect. So it might be in an, a wind tunnel, full the, the wing spanning the full width of the tunnel, and we're only focusing on the flow in the center. Whereas once you deal with uh, edge effects, so a, a wing that has a tip, the airflow near that tip is not quite the same as as uh, as elsewhere. So you have vortices and you have air filling in the top from the from the bottom, wrapping around the sides. So these curves would be slightly different for a wing. And generally, so this this is the CL versus alpha coefficient of lift as a function of angle of attack, and we can see as you increase the angle of attack to 10 degrees, 15 degrees, there you start to stall and the airfoil loses its effectiveness. So uh, a wing with a C capital L would actually, because of the edge effects, because of the air filling in from the tips, this curve would be a bit lower. You wouldn't get as good performance, but it would stall a bit farther out, a bit at a higher angle of attack, especially for lower aspect ratios. So farther from an infinitely long wing. So, but these for airfoils were, that's uh, the input that you would use to get your performance of a wing with a small L. So that would be, these are, these are unitless, but the lift that we're calculating would be pounds per span length of this theoretically infinitely long wing. So, yeah, the CL versus alpha, we can see we increase our coefficient of lift until our stall. The, this is coefficient of lift versus coefficient of drag. And in the, the drag is a function of angle of attack. We can see the drag bucket. So um, the airfoil is, is most efficient, especially this graph is most useful for its efficiency, the lift over the drag. So we can really see how, how well this airfoil is doing at around five degrees. It's getting over 120 times more lift than, than the drag. Now that drag is not all forms of drag. It's just the induced, it's the, it's the drag from the, from the lift. It doesn't include all the skin drag and interference drag between the different parts of the airplane. But uh, this is a useful parameter for your, for your design. So, the most confusing one that I find is, is CM. So this is the moment that the lift forces are producing on the airfoil about, I mean, when we're talking about moments, we're talking about a moment produced by a force about a point. So we're going to get into that and get a physical interpretation of what this is. So we take a look at this these are the equations of uh, lift drag and moment and so always they're with reference the angle of attack is with reference to the airflow so just for convenience sake let's say the airflow is coming from the left here directly horizontally and then our airfoil cord is tilted at this angle of attack this alpha here and our lift will be defined perpendicular to the airflow, so straight up in this case, our drag along with the airfoil, and our resultant would be, in actuality, the, the 
the addition of those two forces. And the moment is defined, arbitrarily is defined positive as pitch up. And it's defined about the quarter point of the chord, which seems arbitrary at first, but we're gonna get a feeling as to why that is. So these are the equations of lift. So you have one half rho v squared, S would be the, the amount of area on this, this theoretically infinitely long wing times C small l. So that would be the coefficient of lift from those graphs and tables that we have on airflowtools.com. Drag is very similar. Moment is very similar as well, except moment is a force times a distance. So you multiply it by the chord length. And one thing to note that's a bit confusing if we go take a look again at these graphs. So we have here the different colors of curves are at different Reynolds numbers. And for a fixed length of chord, that corresponds to a speed or a, a, an airflow speed over the airfoil. So we can see that as you change speeds, the coefficient of lift changes a very small amount. And especially the coefficient of drag changes a bit more. So even though in here we're saying lift is one half rho v squared times S and CL, this CL is a function of Reynolds, which is a function of speed. So really you have v squared and you have, this is a function of v also. However, it's not a strong function, but you might need to take that into account. Let's say for your takeoff, you have a fixed angle of attack, but your speed is varying. So your coefficient of drag is varying as you're, as you're doing that maneuver. Or if you're turning very quickly and decelerating your coefficient of lift, I mean, this is hardly affected at all by your Reynolds. But it's uh, something to think of. I mean, you can create a lookup table with CL as a function of alpha on one dimension and Reynolds on the other, or velocity equivalently on the other. But uh, I mean, that's up to you to determine if that's needed for your specific case. So that's just something to take a note of. The other thing is on airfulltools.com, you have this, uh, this end crit. So that's, a, that's sort of a representation of the roughness of the airfoil surface. And I was reading a bit about that. So in general, they're telling us, they're telling us some guidelines and apparently the, the dirtier the airflow, the rougher the airfoil, the lower the end critical. So if you want to be conservative, maybe, maybe just take the lower end critical values for your uh, for your data.